June 22nd, and we're continuing with Exodus 29, verse 10 through 37. And it's a little bit longer passage today. If you haven't read it, please pause us and then come back after you finish reading, okay? So today, we're going to see, uh, yesterday, we were introduced to, you know, there's going to be a basket of bread, and then the priests are getting ordained, they're being set apart, they're being, you know, made priests by God. Um, and then today, we go a little bit more into depth, what they're going to do with these, not farm animals, what are they going to do with these animals, right? Um, we have a bull, we have two rams, what's going to happen to them? Okay, the bull, the first animal, the bull, is made to be a sin offering, Okay. So we see that um, there's, pa there's parts of an animal, right? There's, I'm like a butcher. Today's like a butcher day, okay? You know what a butcher is? You know when you, your mom goes and gets cuts of meat or like tangyeopsal, okay? That's a butcher. Or if you're like me, just go to Costco, okay? Anyway, so there's the blood, there is the fat, there is the hide, okay? And then there's like the internal stuff, there's the rest, okay? So here it really goes into detail, but I'm not really going to go super into detail. But separately, it tells you what to do with every single part of this animal, okay? And then as it's being offered, this one is called the sin offering. And the, the very end, in verse 14, uh, and I know sometimes we're like, why is this even meaningful? I don't know. But let me just point out one thing in verse 14. Here it says, a bird, the flesh, you know, the meat, it's high and it's intestine, intestine outside the camp. So I think there's a part where when Jesus was, uh, when he was, when he died on the cross, it was outside, you know, it was outside of Jerusalem. And uh, I think um, some scholars have made that connection before that he was our the atonement atonement for our sin so that's sin offering so that it's the first one the bull is a sin offering and then there's two rams and they're not going to be used the same way okay I'll just say ram number one okay ram number one he's the burnt offering there's going to be a splashing of blood there's going to be more butchering cutting up and then putting with the head sorry putting many pieces and then they're going to take the way the specially prepared ram they're going to put him on the altar and they're going to set fire to the whole thing, okay? It's a burnt offering, okay? Whoosh, okay, he's gone. You can't eat that, I think it's just gone. Okay, and then now we have ram number two, contestant number two. Uh, ram number two, he's the ram for the ordination, okay? And here, I think, is um, the, the priests are marked by the blood, okay? The blood. So once again, there's like the different parts of the ram. But here it says, you know, slaughter it, kill it, take its blood, and put it on the very specific parts of Aaron and his sons, the priests, right? Put it on the, the blood on the right ear lobe, the right ear lobe, and then the right thumb, and the right toes, and then, see, there's like a very way to do it. So they're being uh, marked by the blood, they're being kind of purified by the blood. And we, because we know Jesus Christ, we know his death on the cross, he died for our sin, he shed his blood, we hear this a lot. But we see way in the way in the way in the beginning for God's people, this is kind of how it started, this kind of sacrifice, okay? So as things splash, the morph, shh, it must have been really messy. Do they have Clorox wipes? Like, it's really messy. It sounds like, you know, I don't want to clean up this mess, okay? Psh, and then, then there's, okay, and then there's anointing oil, and then they're going to sprinkle it, on, sprinkle it on Aaron and his garments. And he's smelling, I think, like blood and like like olive oil. And, and it's, it's uh, okay, anyway, they're all being set apart as holy, okay? And then it's, for the adult version, it just keeps going on. And then the priests are going to be fed, okay? They have a share, they have a portion. And in verse 25 through 28, you will see that it's this food, this food offering, this, uh, it's going to be a portion for him and his son, okay? The priests always get to eat. They get to eat of this, okay? So they're going to eat this, and then there's a little bit, talking a little bit more about the bread, and then when you, you know, you are the only ones allowed to eat this, you cannot eat the, you know, if you have the leftovers, like, hey, you know, like, hey, friend down the street, I have some leftovers from work, you want some of my leftovers? No, no, no. It's only for the priest, okay? It must not be eaten. Wasn't there a part where um, um, David and his men, they were eating like the sacred bread or something? Like, so it's sacred, it's set apart, holy, don't eat it, okay? That time, God allowed, but usually it's no touchy, no touchy, okay? It's not yours. Okay, um, so then here at the very end of our passage today, in verse 35 through the end, we see that this ordination, this process, is going to take seven days. Okay, so seven days mean that, you know, day number one, you did the whole thing, everything I just described with the bull, ram number one, ram number two, okay, you did everything, and then it's a new day, and hey, bring in today's bull and more rams, okay, this is going to happen for seven days, the seven day ordination, and then 36, sacrifice of a bull each day as a sin offering, so every day this has to happen for seven days, and this is part of them to make them holy, okay, 
So man, I, I feel like I'm just like drenched in, in like guts and blood and just messy stuff, okay? This is the real reality of how these people had to be set apart to be made holy. Um, Pastor Dan is going to talk a little bit more about the, I, I know the blood. If about the details? No. The, the, the details and then I'll, okay. But yeah, so as far as that one was talking about um, the messiness, I think it's something that we can only really imagine. Um, we don't have like abattoirs where animals are slaughtered. slaughtered. What's uh, um, they're like places where the animals are slaughtered before they go to the butcher. Oh, new word! Um, so bad. anyway, uh, you know, these days we just pick up the meat at Costco where everything is white and they make it white so that it looks clean and everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the reality is we can only imagine how messy yeah. this thing was. Like, uh, I think one of the examples of Solomon or David when they were going doing one of those huge giant festivals is they were like every day they were sacrificing thousands of animals, and, right? But so I remember actually being young and reading the Old Testament. This isn't the only section that talks about you know sacrifices in a lot of detail. I was like, what in the world is going on? Is this like a horror movie? Like so much gore and blood and intestines and and organs and everywhere. But what is the idea and what is the point? And as Pastor Ellen mentioned a couple of times as well. The, over, the, the, the general idea is one of being set apart, being set aside, which, is, uh, which are some phrases that come out quite a few times in today's passage. And the whole process takes blood, right? It needs blood, the blood of sacrifice of the animals here. But today we see a lot about the blood, right? The blood of Jesus mm -hmm. as well. And that is the significance, right? That is definitely the direct connection and this is what it used to take, right? What you read today, this is what it used to take with the whole messiness and the time and everything. But all of that, and we're gonna see that in I think two days, uh, has been replaced by the blood of Jesus, uh, which is kind of in a sense for us a lot simpler. But the blood that was poured out, that was shed, that was you know just kind of spilled and everything, this is what it takes, uh, the lifeblood of the animals, but now, or for us now today, it's Jesus, is what can make us holy, what can set us apart. And so the whole splattering, the dabbing on the earlobes and the thumbs and the big toes big and so toe. forth, it's a shadowing, it's a foreshadowing, it's a preview of the blood of Jesus covering and washing us. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're not like, excuse the, the, the image, but bathing ourselves in blood like some horror movie. I don't go there, but um, it's yeah, it's that's why I think they're dabbing, <laughs> Maybe like this. <laughs> right? Because um, you know, it's really not about the amount, but the actual blood yes, and the sacrifice. Uh -huh. yeah? And it is the blood of Jesus that cleanses us, that sets us apart, and enables us, makes us able mm -hmm. to go to God. Yes, if you go to verse 37, the very last verse for today, it says, For seven days, make atonement for the altar and consecrate it, set it holy, set it apart then the altar is going to be most holy and whatever touches it will be holy. So during this process, the priests are being set apart for God for you know, seven days. This is their ordination. You know, I know, you know um, many of our pastors have gotten you know, ordained I think last year, and I don't think they, <laughs> they went through this. Maybe they missed out. You know, maybe they, they should have gone through this. But anyway, it took seven days for this exact process. God said, do this, and they had to perfectly obey. So I think in that, it's not just God wants Oh, God's very picky. He likes very specific things. Like, no, he's a holy God and we are so sinful and we, when we want to align ourselves with God, we do have to obey what he says, okay? So there's this obedience. And then here it says the altar is going to be made most holy. Pastor Daniel talked about the blood that makes us holy, not the amount of it, but the significance of whose blood or what blood it is. This, um, I know, you know, the many of the Israelites, they must have eaten meat, right? They must have eaten bull and, you know, rams, but it wasn't holy. You know, it wasn't, it was the same, you know, like the object, whatever, it, but it wasn't holy because it wasn't, you know, God didn't use it for a holy thing. And here, even the altar is made most holy. And for us, I want you to think about uh, what makes you holy. Uh, when do you feel holy? Do you feel holy when you read your Bible? Raise your hand. Uh, do you feel holy when you, you know, pray a long prayer? Like, you know, maybe you have a family worship with your family and uh, maybe you are the oldest and then you have baby siblings maybe. Mom and dad are like, hey, why don't you pray for us? And then, you know, I, I, I don't want you to be fooled thinking like, if I pray super long, then that will be, that will make me, like God love me more, make me holy. Like, no, it's really, we cannot be made holy in any way. 
Uh, we are sinners and we will remain sinners. We cannot come near to God and it's only because of the blood of Jesus Christ. It's once again not the amount, but it's whose blood is, is it? It's Jesus' blood. And then when we are united with Christ by his death and his resurrection, when you believe that you know, Jesus saved me from my sin when I couldn't get out of my sin cycle, Jesus saved me. And when you hold on to Jesus, then when God looks at us, he doesn't see us as sinners anymore. He sees his perfect son, his righteous, wonderful Jesus son, okay, when he looks at us. So that's the only thing that can make us holy. Um, yesterday, we, we talked about like, you know, like wearing certain things or like, you know, trying to, you know, give our best. But just know that your best is not enough. <laughs> the absolute best you have is not enough. The best of your trying, the best of your wearing, the best of what you can do is not enough. And at the end of the day, you have to get to that point very quickly and say, you know, I'm not enough and I'm not good, but God, you are good. Jesus, you are good. And when we hold on to Jesus, then we are, then we are made right before God. That was kind of a long, I felt like it was like one long sentence for me. <laughs> okay, let's pray today. Uh, dear God, we thank you for your word. And even though some parts of the Bible we read and it's a little confusing, we don't know why everything is there. Uh, God, we just pray that as, you know, day after day and year after year, as we read your word, that the Holy Spirit will continue to work in our hearts and reveal more of who you are, um, that you are a holy God. And uh, although we respect you, although we fear you and we honor you, um, God, I really pray that each and every one of our kids would come into a relationship with you by knowing Jesus Christ, and so that they won't have to fear uh, an unknown God from far away, but they would feel that you are their father and that you love them so much and you made a way for them to come to close to you. God, we pray that as we read your word, that we would just have open hearts and the Holy Spirit would continue to reveal from the youngest, or not, it's not even just for mom and dad, but really from the youngest, that you would reveal the truths that you have and that you would just, um, even for the youngest kids, as they speak, God, I pray that you would bless our parents at home, God. We know that your Holy Spirit is living and active, and it's not by our wisdom or our goodness. It's only by you, God. So we thank you once again, and we praise you and say that you alone are holy, and you are a wonderful God. We thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.